Can I see the screen? Slides? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I, I'll introduce you again. Sorry. Uh, our next speaker is Subhajit Majumdar from City University London. Uh, please, Subhajit. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Uh, so, today I will speak about a work that I have been doing with, uh, in collaboration with my supervisor Bogdan and uh, Alessandra and Ula. So, so, it's about, yeah. So, uh, let me begin by showing the highlights of what we have done. So we started by computing protective spectrum uh, in ADS3, S3, T4 uh, using algebraic Bethian cells and then match that to the protective spectrum obtained in symmetric Orbi fold of T4. Then we generalize this to uh, find the protective spectrum in K3, uh, which are realized as T4 Orbi folds and then also uh, generalized it to mixed flux background. So the first part of this uh, computation was in pure RR using relativistic variables and then generalized it to mixed flux. And these results hold uh, across the moduli space, which is 20 dimensional in each of these backgrounds. So that, uh, those are the highlights. Okay, so what is the setup here? We start with a massless algebraic with ansatz in ADS3 times S3 times T4 which involves this PAC 1 slash 1, 4 centrally extended superalgebra. And the, it is generated by the eight supercharges, which are this S and Q with two labels, uh, one labeling the uh, two copies of PAC 1 slash 1 square, and the other label are the, is corresponds to the PAC 1 slash 1 square uh, superalgebra generators. So basically I equals L comma R refers to the for given small i, the algebra generators are uh, form a single PSE one slash one square centrally extended. And these are the commutation relations for those. Now, furthermore, we also have to uh, use this SU2 circle symmetry. I just want to briefly mention it here. It is embedded inside an SO4 that is the symmetry of uh, R4, which it, uh, shows up in the decompactification of this T4. Uh, so we have the algebra, we uh, need some representation. So this is the representation we work with. It's uh, composed of two short representations, um, two dimensional short representations of the component PSU one slash one squares that generate this PSU one slash one four. And uh, these representations are in these vector spaces. So basically the first one lives in the bosonic uh, grading vector space. So it's like first, uh, First one is a boson, second one is a fermion, and the other one lives in a uh, fermionic graded vector space. So first one is fermion and the second one is a boson. So this is our representation, tensoring these two vector spaces is the uh, basis. So this is what I have written here. So chi is a fermion, so the highest weight state is, will be a fermion, one side highest weight state, and the lowest weight state is also a fermion, and the middle ones are bosons. Okay, so we have the representation uh, basis. Now, what is the R matrix? This is composed of two PSC one slash one square R matrices like this, uh, graded tensor product in between them. And this component PSC one slash one square R matrices are written down here. So some nice features of these R matrices are that they are in the reference form because uh, we are working in the pure RR limit, this kind of representation exists in terms of these relativistic gamma variables, which can be transformed to the usually known mo momentum variables in this manner, log 10 p by 4. And the uh, functions showing up in the R matrices are of this type, hyperbolic functions uh, with the difference of the spectral parameters inside as argument. Now using this R matrix that I mentioned, uh, we can generate the monodromy matrix, which again is a tensor product of the component monodromy matrices. And this component ones are going to be written down uh, in terms of the uh, spin chain operators, uh, sort of spin chain operators like this. Uh, and so these B operators showing up here will be used to generate the beta ansatz. And the transfer matrix is again, uh, just the super trace over the auxiliary space of the monodromy matrix that we introduced. This is the Bethe ansatz. So we use the B operators that I mentioned previously 
to generate on top of the pseudo vacuum, which is a bunch of the highest risk state chi uh, labeled by the impurities at these sites. And so this is a uh, usual uh, generic state. For it to be an eigenstate, we and the parameters sitting inside the V operators as well as the impurities need to satisfy certain beta equations, which are written down here. So this is a momentum carrying beta equation, which is which determines these gamma i's, uh, fixes those. And then there are these auxiliary beta equations that fix the auxiliary beta roots sitting inside the B operators. So now that we have the setup that we shall work with, so how do we compute the protective states from them? So for those, we need to observe that uh, if we take the zero momentum limit or re restrict to the zero momentum, uh, then which corresponds to the relativistic variables gamma going to plus or minus infinity, uh, then, and, and also just restrict to the fermionic modes, chi and chi tilde, then the states that we get, beta states, are actually uh, protected because they are annihilated by the PSE1 slash 1 4 generators. And this uh, correspond to the highest state states of the protected multiplets of the string theory. So in order to find all the protected states, we also need to account for the SU2 circle symmetry that I mentioned in the uh, beginning. So that actually what it does is just doubles our PSE1 slash 4, 1, PSE1 slash 1, 4 uh, basis elements. So we have two copies of those now, uh, mm, indicating the SE2 circle symmetry by this plus minus. And so we have two copies of PSE1 slash 1, 4 and ABA. And so the moment uh, protected states show up uh, only at uh, the low lying Beta states. So for n naught, which are which corresponds to the number of frame particles, uh, for zero, one, two, or three, or four frame particles only, we uh, if we compute the beta states and then take this restriction, then we get the protected states. And well, nicely enough, we see that uh, for T four, uh, the we recover the Hodge diamond for any given set of the global charges, which are uh, parameterized by a parameter called L and uh, putative length of a spin chain. Uh, so these are the, uh, this is the usual T4 Hodge diamond that we recover by this analysis. Now let us see what happens for the orbifold case. Uh, so for K3 uh, to be realized as an orbifold, we need to work with this orbifold group gamma to be such that it is Zn with n equals two, three, four, or six. These are the only ones that generate those K3s. And uh, the action of this orbifold group is such that it only affects the SU2 circle index. So as I mentioned previously, the chi T1, T2, and chi tilde, the basis elements, only uh, now have a plus or minus sign depending on the C2 circle. And the action only uh, changes the, uh, means is dependent on the, uh, whether it is a plus or a minus. So chi plus goes to e to the power two pi i by n times chi plus, and chi minus goes to the negative of that. Uh, and chi twiddle also behaves the same way as chi. So, yeah, that's the action. And using this action, now we can write down the orbifold invariant states. And for n equals three, two, three, four, six, all of those, we have a bunch of these orbifold invariant states. However, for n equals two, there is an enhancement because we are g squares to one, and we have for some further states like this. So this is the untwisted sector. For twisted sector, the modification that happens is at the level of the beta equation. And we see that there is a twisted boundary condition that we need to impose with the twisting angle being two pi by n. So one can notice from this that, and the auxiliary beta equation stays the same as before. So what happens at the zero momentum limit is only the ground state survives and no excitations on top of that can exist. You can check that with the beta, at the level of the beta equation themselves. So what we end up with is that we have get a bunch of uh, states, uh, one state for each of the twisted sectors uh, under the orbifold action. So that is labeled by the fixed points. So if we account for all those twisted, twisted states, they correspond, uh, contribute to H11, the hot number H11. And so for T4 mod Z2, we see that we end up with this contribution from the untwisted sector and this amount of contribution, 16 are the number of fixed points. So uh, each contributing one to H11 and we get this Hodge diamond. And similarly for T4, uh, N equals three, four or six, we have a different untwisted sector, but the twisted sector is such that we end up with the same K3 Hodge diamond. 
here also. In mixed flux diagrams, we need to work with Zukowski variables, but the results are actually the same. Thank you very much. Um, let's thank uh, Suvajit. And uh, we have time for questions. Can I ask one? So um, I remember that there was an issue of uh, including also interaction uh, between the massive modes uh, when you consider these uh, beta answers outside of the BMN limit. Uh, in ADS free process free cross T4. Yeah. Do you include also the interaction so, with the massive or is just massless? Uh... So massless uh, modes sitting on top of the BMN vacuum Z to the power L kind of state. So uh, I didn't write down the protective states, but the previous paper that was written down in 1701 something, uh, Diego and uh, Bogdan and others. Uh, so that paper uh, wrote down in terms of just the Bethe equations, the kind of, uh, so yeah, I, I get what you mean. So are you referring to the fact that it has to be a long range kind of thing? Yeah, I remember that um, in that paper, indeed, uh, uh, it was uh, only on the BMN limit, uh, I called the relativistic limit that, in that paper. Then uh, when you go to the gamma variable, uh, you extended the- uh, Non-relativistic, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is the issue that uh, the massless uh, comes into interaction, uh, if, I, if I recall correctly. But you have to be whatever it means in this case. So, so maybe in this, is it the exact equations or, or not the ones you consider? Um, so we work with the gamma variables. I don't know the issues that mark, uh, might show up there, but yeah, I'm, I'm so I, that's why I was trying to avoid uh, any uh, uh, statements regarding a spin chain. I am purely working with the whatever shows up with the beta equations. If you start with the beta equation and use the ABA from there, and then what sort of things we get? Okay. This ABA gives the beta equations that previously uh, mm -hmm. wrote down. So it's not a, a limit of the equation, just subsector. Is it correct? Yeah, subsector. Yes, yes. yes. So and then I ask question. Uh, so given that it's a massless sector, what's actually applicability uh, region of these equations because of the wrapping corrections and so on? So so yeah, this was shown uh, in the 1701 paper. We have not probed this thing uh, further yet, but they showed that at one loop uh, the wrapping corrections are vanishing. So that's what they had showed, I believe, in 1701 paper. In one loop. At but one loop only, yeah. But now I'm confused. Is it one loop equations or is this are exact? Just so these are exact. So, but they were able to show. I, I don't know how they. I means I have to check that paper properly for that. But I read this comment there that they had uh, showed the wrapping corrections to be vanishing at one loop. Order. The leading order wrapping corrections. So yeah, leading order. So that's not one loop. So equations do not depend on the coupling, but wrapping correction do depend on the coupling. Is what you're saying? If you worked hard, uh, you could get the TBA to you know check further corrections because the TBA exists. Yeah, that's what confused me. There is no coupling here, right? So how come uh, one loop to loop discussion? Where is coupling? I don't see any coupling. Am I missing something? Where is coupling in the equation? So if there is no coupling in the equation, why a wrapping correction depends on the... Then you have to go outside the sector, I guess, to get uh, all the wrapping corrections. But there is a coupling somewhere in the dispersion relation. Yeah, exactly. But, okay, strange. Be because dispersion relation is a... Uh, it was a... Oh, all right, I don't know. There are Zukowski variables, right? Yeah, Zukowski showed, uh, yeah, it's more explicit there actually, because in the definition of the Zukowski to momentum only, you see that. Uh, yeah. So here that actually is sort of sandwiched in the representation of the super algebra generators. Uh, yeah. And then your matrix, our matrix uh, was just for the symmetry algebra itself, not for the centrally extended one. So it was. The PSU one slash one, so there's no extension. Is there a central extension when you? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so 
Wait, uh, a sickage. Uh, I'm trying to remember because in the usual animatics, we do have the uh, dependence on the coupling. Okay, maybe maybe we can continue. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Subhajit. Uh, let's thank the speaker.